Today's episode is brought to you by Bill O'Brien. If you are in need of a great wide receiver and have very little to give up, please call 1-800-BILL-O'BRIEN. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. <laughs> Monday, November 16th. Back in action. Welcome, welcome back, to the Andy. show. Thank you, Jason. I'm feeling good. <laughs> feeling great. I think everyone's feeling great. Well, not everyone. Look, I, 48, 48 states feeling great right now. If uh, and I've seen, I've seen the Twitter buzz. If you're a Texans fan, I'm sorry for the introduction. If you're a Bills fan, I'm sorry for what's to come. <laughs> but that was exciting. That was fun. That was good for football, and it was good for us as as Cardinal fans. See, the the thing is, yeah, we <laughs> were. What's the thing, Mike? Well, for for the Bills fans, I'm sure that the tweets were. Sitting in drafts, they were ready to send with that Stephon Diggs touchdown. Where, uh, yeah, they were in drafts. My my heart had been ripped out and thrown onto the ground, and I sat there. Did and you just hear? Waited. Did you hear the announcer? What the announcer said when that play happened? The I announcer for the radio or the game. I believe it was the, the television call. I don't think I heard it. Uh, when Our, Stephon Diggs caught the touchdown pass, the announcer said. Stephon Diggs is the best wide receiver in football this year. And then someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an idiot. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I don't know if someone relayed that. Oh, yeah. They called right down the sideline. They said, hey, Hop, did you hear what that guy just said? They said he's the best. All right. All right. It was, it was wonderful. It was. <laughs> quite the moment and um you know kyler continues to set the world on fire for fantasy and we have a lot of studs a lot of duds to talk about on the show today i i glanced at our league of record uh, schedules mm -hmm. and the playoffs are on the way man they it's are close it's close three more weeks and uh we'll be there so hopefully we can help you get over the hump get into the playoffs take home that hashtag foot clan title and uh let's react let's react in a most sophisticated mm, fashion is, yes yes a little monday pun day for you we've got uh well we've got hail murray as the play has been dubbed the yes. hail murray yes spectacular deandre hopking mm, i'm going in here with Optimus prime oh that one's great uh, yes i also like deandre moskins yeah deandre hop wins <laughs> Now let's turn let's turn the page here. We've got mm, Fluke Johnson, mm, Puke Johnson, <laughs> du Dookie Johnson. Oh no! Oh, we hit all the bodily fluids. Jason, I think this next one's for you. Wee Higgins. Wee Higgins. Those yes. are my favorite. DK Metcalf. Oh, yeah. Curtis Shamwell. Pulak. Yeah, yeah, Pulak. You're a turd. <laughs> Austin Pooper. Oh, Cole. Beastly. Oh, he was great. He was unbelievable. And dude, where's my car? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, dude, where's my car? <laughs> Cinematic masterpiece. Classic film. Uh, I legitimately love that movie. It's really funny. I can't remember the name. Who's the the actor? Ashton Kutcher? Oh, he was in that, right? But and, there's uh, the guy. Stifler. That's what I was thinking. Whatever. Stifler. <laughs> yes, Stifler. 100%. What's it? Nobody knows. Scott? Uh, Sean William Sean. Scott? Something like that. <laughs> I like him. I think he's good. He's a funny guy. Yeah. Well, that was his shining achievement. <laughs> Stifler. If you would like to follow us on social media, you can do so at Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. You can watch the show at YouTube.com slash the fantasy Footballers. Yeah, it's it's Sean William Scott. Ha ha. I got both his names. <laughs> three names, three movies. That's what that that's what he's good for. Uh like I said, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer, subscribe, click the bell, follow along with the show. Let's get into the rewind. 
Weekly Rewind. All right, there were some players placed on the injured reserve ahead of Week 10. David Johnson, Justin Jackson, Devonta Freeman. So three-week minimum for those three guys? That is correct. Well, two now, two yeah, more. Two more weeks. Teddy Bridgewater uh, exited with a knee injury. MRI showed no structural damage. I know you were That's worried, good. Mike. Yeah, it was one of those – uh, the defender just dives and hits the quarterback right in the back of the knees, and, and you saw immediately that Teddy Bridgewater was hurt. So that's that's great news that there's no structural damage at least. But you'll have to monitor it. I don't, I won't be shocked to see him miss a week or two. Christian McCaffrey unlikely to play this oh, upcoming no! Sunday against the Lions. The shoulder injury, as of 20 minutes ago, likely to keep him out for another week, and it was not. Mm. Uh, Mike Davis has lost some steam. Yeah, Mike Davis. Yeah. He did all he could. He didn't have the same quite of you know the same quite size of tank that Christian what? McCaffrey had. <laughs> so you know when you when you run out, you run out much like, quicker. Like McCaffrey's <laughs> like a gas powered uh, tankless water heater. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think that's where Jason was trying to go. I I, I was lost. Meanwhile, um, the Mike De Mike Davis got a, one of his elements has been corroded. No, no, keep with the water heater themed <laughs> metaphors. It's very easy to that's comprehend. That's what I was doing. Yeah. Now uh, all, the all anode said, rod, <laughs> the bacteria. I I shared this a little sediment. bit. Sediment. <laughs> I shared this a little bit uh, last week. As, as you know, in our league of record, I've got. Uh, CMC on the roster mm -hmm. so I'm uh, very interested in having him back and I read different doctors reports watch different doctors videos and I've been worried since that time that they that he might miss till the bye because if he misses this next week Oof. then that means there's one more week until their bye so which means your first week back with him would be would be the fantasy playoffs in week 14 that's fine. Against <laughs> yes, he will be back for Unless the fantasy playoffs. Unless you need him playoffs. to get there. Exactly. And that's one of those things where this past week after we did the trade episode, we had a lot of questions. Do I trade Christian McCaffrey for yeah. Derrick Henry? And if you're in a certain situation where you need wins to get to the playoffs, you might need to do that because I don't know that he's going to be back before the playoffs. All right. Matthew Stafford had tests on the injured thumb. He had it wrapped during the game. Not much concern going forward. He'll be the quarterback. Drew Brees mm. suffered a rib contusion in the game. MRI today to see what cartilage damage is there. They may be without Drew Brees for a while. Yeah, they're they're the Saints right now are expecting to be without him. They're making plans, and it wasn't just the ribs. Remember, he had the shoulder issue as well. So this will just give him time to heal up. Can I throw something out there? Sure. See if it sticks. I mean the the tight end landscape this past oh, week oh brother this was the uh the elephant graveyard from lion king a dark a dark yes. and dangerous place no one should venture to drew Brees missing time you're going to get a little oh. bit extra taste some hill in the next few weeks and he's tight end eligible in a lot of league uh formats so i see where you're you know, going I, I, yeah. why, why right. not put Taysom hill in there if you're not the basically if you're not the travis kelsey fantasy football uh manager everybody else is a dart throw right now yeah that that's not a terrible idea i mean Jameis winston is going to be the the primary quarterback like the starting quarterback for the team but you are correct i, I expect to see Taysom hill more than we have annoyingly seen him taking Drew he's Brees had off some the field. double digit fantasy weeks in spite of uh himself and <laughs> what everybody <laughs> else wants Traquan Smith, concussion, exited the game. Jamichael Hasty suffered a broken collarbone. Because Holy crap, man. If you have the word running back next to your name in San Francisco, you are going down. They should name them all fullbacks how, to try to keep them safe. How is Jarek McKinnon the guy that's not getting injured? That's like, kind of shocking. He, he did his time. Yeah. He, he put in the credit. Now, from what I understand, they're expecting both Mostert and Tevin Coleman back. After, uh, I believe, the bye week's coming up. Is that right? That would be correct, yes. Yeah, so I think they expect them both back. Uh, so, yeah, Jermichael Hasty, broken collarbone. See you later. I mean, that's if you if you can go to the team that has Raheem Mostert because he's going to be on bye and they, yes. they need to have a piece, I would try and steal Mostert away. If it, it's, it feels like forever ago I, I, since we have seen Raheem Mostert, but just remember how he looked playing with that team, and he was dominating. He looked unbelievable. Every play felt like he had yeah. a chance at an 80-yard rushing touchdown.
I went out and got him a couple weeks ago in Dynasty for the playoffs because I think he has a great opportunity. John Brown exited with an ankle injury on the other leg, mm. so he is now hobbled again. And we saw what Cole Beasley did in this game. With Once John Brown left, it was the Cole Beasley show. Patrick Peterson was locked up on Diggs. Diggs still got his, but Beasley is interesting. Yeah, if, yeah John Brown, if John Brown is out, Beasley is a great fantasy option. Now, the, the Bills are on bye, so I expect that John Brown will be active and good enough to go uh, in two weeks. All right, Chris Carson, excellent chance of returning in week 11 against that's, the Cardinals. That's, that's, that's Thursday news. night football. That is a huge game. Both six and three teams playing for the division. We get to see Kyler and Russ again. <laughs> I cannot wait. And they need chris carson very badly yes they do uh andrew whitworth torn mcl damaged pcl oh, really? so it wasn't an acl but uh you know this is starting tackle for the los angeles rams this is gonna hurt i mean it hurts him but it's gonna hurt the team yeah, as well it, yeah it definitely will and uh a couple of monday night updates david montgomery was ruled out you guys talked about this lamar miller was activated off the practice squad so you're gonna have lamar miller you're going to have Cordero Patterson. You're going to have Ryan Nall. I would expect Miller to get the majority of the work tonight. Over Nall? I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I expect Miller to get the majority of the early down work. And then Allen Robinson, he is questionable with a knee injury. I have him in a league where I had to add uh, Anthony Miller just as an insurance policy in case he misses, but I would expect him to be out there. And it's such a good matchup against Minnesota that it'd be a shame if he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And you've got play calling being handed off to Bill Lazor tonight, mm -hmm. which – you know, sometimes that could be like, a, oh, no, what's going to happen? But in this case, it's a, how could it get any worse? I just hope that laser keeps the magic alive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got a deck of cards. He's got a top <laughs> hat and things like that. All right. Um, let's talk studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right. Tom Brady did it. Uh, yeah, he doesn't he always do it, but he did it. Against Carolina, 28 for 39, three touchdowns, 341 passing yards. Jason, start of the week. So pick your spots with Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick my spot after being humiliated on <laughs> prime time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick betting on Tom Brady. Uh, you know what's going to be very fun for me on the outside looking in, Jason, is you have, uh, you have Tom Brady and you have Josh Allen. Yeah. And you have a Tom Brady playoff schedule of Minnesota, Atlanta, Detroit. Yeah. And yet I know that that schedule will not be enough to make you not think long and hard and make the wrong decision between Brady and Josh Allen. It's uh, it's tough. I mean, I, I made the wrong decision this week and played Josh Allen, but yeah, it's fine. Now, 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 Josh Allen plays Pittsburgh, Denver, New England in those fantasy playoff weeks. Yeah, that's why I went and got Tom Brady. Yeah. But it's going to be hard to actually say, okay, Josh Especially Allen. Especially if Brady gives you a stinker over the next three weeks to, yeah. to make you wonder. But great week for him. Kyler Murray is unstoppable. 11 for 61, two more rushing touchdowns. He is averaging 6.9 yards per carry. He's on pace for 5,295 total yards and 48 total touchdowns. <laughs> Do you remember oh, seven weeks ago? Um, it barely. Was, it was week four. Yeah, barely. That was the last time we saw Kyler Murray not finish the week as a top five fantasy quarterback. Uh, he's Don't get me wrong. He was uh, still a quarterback one that week. He's been a quarterback one every week of the year but he has been on fire the last seven weeks. Big Ben, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, all with very solid weeks. A little bit of a an improvement for Lamar Jackson as well. Anybody you want to talk about from that bunch? Anybody you're looking at moving forward? Big Ben managed yeah, okay. to turn Claypool, Juju, and Deontay all into top 10 fantasy options this yeah, week. Yeah, the fact that Ben Roethlisberger is, is surrounded by those guys, three healthy guys, I mean – I think that this team needs to have Deontay Johnson healthy to be running at full throttle. Like Claypool, the, the rookie season is incredible. I'm very excited to watch Maple Tron moving forward. But Deontay Johnson is a very special wide receiver who is – he's Antonio Brown. He, he has replaced Antonio Brown for this team. And as long as those three guys are healthy, I think that Ben is in play, especially this week against – or this upcoming week against Jacksonville. Baltimore – it. The matchup is a little sketchy, but they're they're hurting a little bit on the defensive side. So Ben is Ben's Ben's a solid player. They haven't been able forward. to run the football lately. True. 
So it, it's going to be on Big Ben to to find his playmakers. And like you said, you know, even Eric Ebron has been active in the offense. Right. So there are some signs of life oh, there. Did you, did you see the shot of uh, – of Juju and Ebron yes, dance. Did. Oh, yes, man. I did. They, were, they, were, they were giving the business. Hey, 9-0. and oh. You can yeah. dance at 9-0. and oh. Yes, you can. Josh Allen, though, another nice game. Had the uh, what what looked like the game-winning touchdown to Stephon Diggs. Great ball on that. I yes. Mean, also, just a perfect placement. Great catch on his receiving touchdown. I don't think it was a great pass. It he, was. It was he a went out. He, he got that and catch. And then, then a little bit of wiggle Yeah, right at the end. All right, at the running back position, Alvin Kamara was the number one on the week, or is so far, and uh, this was while running for 15 total yards. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. What? That's, that's he had how 15 he... rushing yards. Two rushing touchdowns, though. And one passing touch, uh, receiving <laughs> touchdown. It, it, uh, as someone who faced Kamara in multiple leagues and thought things were going well to start the game, they weren't because he is unstoppable. It, and it's, it, it's not like this is, you know – Un unheard of because he's done this before I'm looking at his game log 16 total rushing yards in week one he was the running back nine he was outstanding he just does so much work in the passing game all right how about Josh Jacobs two more touchdowns on the ground he's the running back seven in fantasy points per game right now this is impressive yeah he is he, he is a spike week type of player yeah he he has these uh multi-touchdown games mm -hmm. I think three times this year and and all the while, Devontae Booker had 16 for 81 and two, so there were there was more on the table there, but they just manhandled Denver. Naeem Hines from Thursday night was great. Uh, it's hard not to say he's the best running back on that team moving forward for fantasy purposes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I have the confidence to plug him in against Green Bay. Uh, the matchup would be there. Hines has looked like the best guy the last couple of weeks, but they are very I imagine very hot be, hand. There'll be dogs though in that game, right? Against Green Bay, oh, it, it, not by much. Not where maybe where by a couple the, points. It's in Indianapolis. Uh no, I think I'll. I would call the line like maybe Indy okay. by one. Uh, I can't talk about this next one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ronald, man. Ronald Jones, superstar running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Unlimited. versus Carolina, rips off a ninety-eight yard rushing touchdown. Was it? He is the fourth player in history to do that which is shocking to me i figured that number would be higher but this it it made no sense this was an anti-bruce game for ronald jones you so, had drop passes you would he fumbled he and lost fumbled it. the ball and lost it and here's the thing and it led to a, a touchdown a, a, a peek behind the curtain here in our league of record a very important game andy was going up against ronald jones in a must win uh, matchup and then He's watching the beginning of this game, and it's perfect. Ronald Jones drops a pass. Ronald Jones fumbles the right ball the and beginning. loses it right in the beginning. He's got like two fantasy points, and you know, oh, my gosh, he's probably done. This is going to be a, a nickelback game. Leonard Fournette's going to come in. And then all he did was continue to totally out-snap and out-touch Leonard Fournette. Well, and he's, let's face facts, Bruce. Maybe you face them finally. Maybe you listen to somebody. Ronald Jones is 10 times the runner of anybody else you've put on this team, and everybody knows it. Yes, he's got stone hands. Yes, he fumbles <laughs> in, uh, frequently. He's still 10 times better for your team, and by sticking with him, he busted off a 98-yard touchdown right in my face. Yeah, he ripped off that run and ripped Andy's heart out of his body. I don't think Andy <laughs> said a word for about 35 he, he minutes after that, after that run. It was It was... It got real dark around the studio. Well, and, and it's just it's just a perfect knife twist for a guy who's backed Ronald Jones his entire career, being myself. This is the only time I've ever rooted, wanted to actively root against him was in a game where I play him, and uh, he fumbles. I'm like, all right, Bruce is going to do his thing. No, Ronald Jones, 23 for 192 <laughs> and one. And, uh, yeah, he was great. DeAndre Swift yeah, was oh. great as well. He got 50. Uh, 16 for 81 on the ground, five targets, five for 68 and a touchdown. He and, uh, was the lead back. I mean, he is – DeAndre Swift, we thought we were highlighting him last week. If your uh, name was DeAndre, you, you, you had you a nice week. Yeah. Uh, we're highlighting last week how Swift just keeps coming through with these games. And for fantasy football players, when you're looking at the metrics, like the snap count, I need my running back to be on the field. I need snaps. It just – 
the snaps were not correlating with the opportunities that Swift kept getting where he's on the field for 40% of the time, but he's getting double-digit opportunities. And then, so he, he had moved into, you have to play DeAndre Swift and just hope that this trend continues, except they named him the starter. He was the main guy, 16 carries and five targets. Like DeAndre Swift is about to break out in a very big way. This he's, is he's a great running back. Gets to play Carolina and Houston over the next two weeks. This is the recipe for the majority of of rookies. Yeah, if they don't the get normal. it right out of the gate. You've got the Miles Sanders later in the season situation. You could see the same thing with Antonio Gibson getting you know uh, being more successful over the second half of the year too. Could, but JD <laughs> JD McKissick. He's been good. Has been good. He is the main running back. I know. I want to celebrate the Antonio Gibbs season as well. He was great for fantasy football because he had two touchdowns. But was that Antonio Gibbs season? You're darn right it was. Do you guys remember when you nice, gave me man. so much crap for giving Smooch's credit before the season? And I, how you said that there was no possible way that this guy could do anything? I do not remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember this either. Yeah, What's he talking about, Jerry? Uh, find the tape. Yeah. 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 Brooks? <laughs> But, uh, no, Gibson still got into the end zone. He keeps doing that. And uh, those two guys, majority of the work, you just want to see Alex Smith move the football. And he moved the football. It it took some time for Smith, if you were watching the game flow. He looked he looked nervous as one who almost lost their leg and now playing quarterback probably would feel. I don't, I've never experienced that. So, he's always played a little bit like a guy that he's, yeah, he's coming that's, back from injury. That's fair. But he's, he got into the groove eventually, and this was uh, – I believe I saw the stat. This is the first time that Alex Smith has thrown 300-plus in back-to-back games. Can I can I throw something out there for you? Sorry, Jason. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say he, he targets J.D. McKissick yes. on every other throw. The last two weeks when it's been Alex Smith in charge – the two-week, 16-game pace for J.D. McKissick is 232 targets. That's insane. That's uh, insane. Four, yeah, 14 targets against the Giants, 15 targets So let this me throw this week. out there. A decision I never thought I'd have to make, and I, this is asking for a friend. I grabbed Alex Smith in our Dynasty League, mm -hmm. you know, because you're in a Dynasty League, you should have him on the roster. Any starting quarterback should be rostered. I, I have Josh Allen on by next week. Alex Smith, he did not throw any touchdowns. He plays Cincinnati at home. It's a good matchup. Okay. Ryan Tannehill has to go to Baltimore. Wow. Am I playing Alex Smith? <laughs> You're definitely thinking about it. I'm thinking about playing Alex Smith are, in a football game. You are definitely thinking about it. Uh, Nick Chubb returned with a monster game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ripped the heart out of fantasy managers as he stepped out of bounds on the one on a free touchdown. Rex Burkhead, sexy Rexy the Goathead, continues to get it done with touchdowns. You know what, though? I don't think that Rex Burkhead should be the mention here. I think he should be – I think it should be Damian Harris. That's, that is fine. Damian I think Harris, Damian Harris stood out again and yeah. will be – this is the identity of this team that won the game. Yep. Damian Harris is going to be the identity of the Patriots the rest of the way. Damian Harris ran all over the Baltimore Ravens. I, it was a shock to see how bad – it happened. Now, Clay is 22 Campbell, for 121. Clay is Campbell for the Baltimore Ravens is out, and I think he's going to miss a couple more weeks. But I was like, I, I did not foresee that turning into Damian Harris running all over the place. Damian Harris, uh, the last four weeks, here's his yards per carry 5.8, 6.4, 5.1, and 5.5. Damian Harris has just been a really good running back. It hasn't always. You know, about half of those weeks, it hasn't turned into great fantasy production. Um, but because Burkhead keeps getting the touchdowns, yeah. I, probably, what's his receptions? Does he get targeted at all? Uh, his targets are the last three weeks were zero, zero, and nothing. Yeah, that's that's the that's hard. I mean, if you're yeah. in a half or full point league that's, and you get that's the Sony. Yeah, it's the Sony, but with a little extra yards well, per carry. Yeah, I mean, it's better, but I'm <laughs> saying it's the Sony uh, yeah. usage opportunity. Before we move into the wide receiver studs, want to thank today's sponsor, Quip. Good health Quip it. starts. Quip it good. Good health starts with good habits, and Quip makes it easier for you to brush and floss better. The Quip electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute routine. And there's even a size down version designed for kids. I've got a Quip. My wife has a Quip. And that size down version, all three of my children 
have that quip toothbrush. It's great. It, it, like, it, I mean, it, it's a good looking toothbrush. So you can't say that about m many of them. And they got this case. You just put it right up on the mirror. It's out of the way. Uh, and the, the, the time sonic vibrations is crucial in the morning, making sure that you know exactly how long to brush your teeth. And quip brush head, you can get the toothpaste and floss. Refills are delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5 each. Shipping is free. And if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you will get your first refill for free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers, spelled getquip.com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. All right, we're talking about wide receiver studs. So you start at the top with uh, DeAndre. Oh, no, wait. The number one wide receiver was Marquez Valdez Scantling. <laughs> every time, every week that we don't tout Marquez and say this is the game, he's got a great opportunity, that's when the dude is eating hamburgers on the field. Every if time he, we're like, oh, he's taking it to 100, he takes it to zero. If he is so started frustrating. by more than 1% of people, he cannot catch the football. But if you leave him on your bench – you get a game like this, four for 149 and one. Hopkins was just behind by percentage points, depending on your league scoring format. Uh, Hopkins ended up with 12 targets, seven for 127 and one. Has Seattle on Thursday. You know, we thought Lazard might have been able to get back on the field. He was ruled out. MBS was, was there. I expect Lazard next week. So yeah. if you've been, if you happen to catch that MVS lightning this week, just thank the lucky stars and know that Lazard will, is going to be well, back sooner and, than later. And MVS isn't always going to get an awesome chop block by the referee uh, in midfield. If you <laughs> that, didn't get to see the oh replay, man. it was it was <laughs> ref got <laughs> annihilated. The, the, the MVS caught the ball. And he's he, he's he's still got forty yards to run for the end zone. And as he's going, and players are trying to catch him. There's a the the ref that's in that that part of the field that's kind of running alongside and gets in the way of a player gets shoved in the back and then blocks the uh, other the other uh, defender. defender. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was spectacular. And uh, Cole Beasley, we brought him up. I mean, I know that the Bills fans are hurting today, but um, I'm still rooting for you the rest of the way. I mean, this is this is Love a team playing great and uh, Super Bowl pick. Still think they've got a shot. And now Miami and Buffalo fighting at the division. And the, the Patriots starting to put it together. So it could be a fun finish there. 13 targets, 11 for 109 and 1 for Cole Beasley. If you look at the game log of John Brown and Cole Beasley mm -hmm. next to each other, you see th basically three really good games from Cole Beasley. And all three are when John Brown was either not active for two of them or what happened in, in uh, yesterday's game and he got knocked out. Yeah, it, it just makes sense. Diggs is going to get his, and then it's it's do they have enough to go around? Willie Sneed ended up five for sixty four and two. Um, okay, uh, not worried about it. I haven't thought about Willie Sneed uh, about four years. You haven't had yeah. a need, no. But it's I like Willie Sneed. Yeah, sure. I wish Hollywood Brown would would do that, but, but he just highlights are. that there can be production at the wide receiver That's position. That's true. Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Juju Smith-Schuster, all in double digits of targets. Deontay, 6 for 116 and 1. Claypool, 4 for 56 and 2. Juju, 9 for 77 and 1. And uh, and you can thank James Conner for all of this production because I'm sure they would have liked to just run the ball and, and keep their lead, and they couldn't because James Conner is he's just not that good. Well, I think uh, Jonathan Taylor has been watching James Conner film. Yeah, I mean, those, those two, they've the, been working out together. Goodness. Just running into butts. That's yeah. what they do. Just run into <laughs> butts. But Deontay was great again. I mean, if, if you look at these three players, you know, Juju's been putting up double-digit games so every single week. Juju feels feels back, man. Well, he's got that number two role back. That's <laughs> true. You know, when he dominated, he wasn't the focal point. Andy brought this up over and over and over with, for the last two years when it was like, we haven't seen him without Antonio Brown, and he's never proven that he could do it as the one. In fact, he kind of proved he couldn't do it as the one, but now with Claypool and Deontay Johnson becoming focal points for defenses and Juju's just you know, this big slot wide receiver, he isn't, he's much more of an afterthought. Yeah, and, and, and it was a great week. Now, if you're – I mean, this is kind of pointless to do. Deontay's kind of at the top of all of our lists moving forward, mm -hmm. but – 
Claypool is big play. I mean, he had plenty of other opportunities in this game. Juju is more steady. Who would you rather have the rest of the season, Claypool or Juju? Probably. Is that team dynamic? I uh, yeah, it, it, team dynamic. But more often than not, I would say Claypool. I actually thought about trying to trade for Juju. That's where he's at. Wow, Stick. that's a big step. Yeah, I mean, just as you know, like a second flex. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't read into it <laughs> too far, don't Mike. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, Marvin Jones got it done again without Galladay. Ten targets, eight for ninety-six and a touchdown. T. Higgins continues to get it done. Seven mm-hmm. for one, fifteen and one. Uh, it'll be an interesting matchup next week. Washington's actually number one against fantasy wide receivers. Yeah, so. Marvin Jones said, ha, 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 to that. That's true. He did. Uh, Stephon Diggs, 10 for 93 and one. DJ Moore had a DJ Moore game, yeah! 4 for 96 and one. DJ! Disintegrating Curtis Samuel's value in the process. Holy crap, it did. All right, tight ends were, were rough, guys. Um, oh, I can't believe we even have a studs part of the show for tight ends. It's Rob Gronkowski, who With, was the tight end one. He was the tight end one. He had two catches. He he legitimately had three targets, two receptions, and is the best thing you could have played at tight end which means that you and your opponent, unless you played Gronk, you probably both just got nothing from the tight end position. There were three tight ends that were, you know, fantasy relevant starting guys Mark Andrews, Hunter Henry, and Rob Gronkowski. Outside of those three, every mm-hmm. other tight end that you started, it doesn't matter whether it was uh, anybody. It, insert all tight ends. They all stunk. You didn't start Logan Thomas everywhere? I did not. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. All tight ends. Tight ends. This is the tight end week. Did you have Darren Waller? Did you have Jared Cook? Did you have TJ Hawkinson? Did you have Evan Ingram? Did you have Dallas Goddard? Did you have Noah Fant? Sorry, they all stunk this week. Every single one of them. Yeah, and I guess since we're we're just on the tight ends, we'll get the tight end stinkers out of the way. Is there anybody that... um, that you're worried about moving forward. Like Waller, you play every week. Hawkinson, you probably keep playing. Mm-hmm. What about Goddard not producing in with these opportunities in back-to-back weeks? He seemed like somebody you might have wanted to load up for for the playoffs. I will Noah s- Fant's been stinky. D- Dallas Goddard did have to leave the game for a portion to uh, – be. he was evaluated for a head injury, so I don't know if that factored in at all. I have never received more trade offers for Travis Kelsey than this week. <laughs> this yeah. week after these. Wait, in the league of record? Yeah. Yeah. People are wasting their time trying to get Travis Kelsey from you. You got to try are. to find someone on tilt. I mean, it, if you're this guy's gonna... this guy's one of them. Of Jace, course Jace I am. I'm, I I mean, look, See, it's the... I respect Andy <laughs> so much that I'm not even going to send him a trade <laughs> offer for Travis Kelsey because that's stupid. What's it's wasting my time and it's wasting his time. Multiple people have not just made offers. They've said. What do you want? Just name it. Right. And, name and your price, Just Wonka. name your price. And I'm looking at the situation. I'm going, I can't name a price. Like, exactly. there's no combination of players that equals, like, what if, Mike, I, I tell you, hey, trade me a roster spot that's worth 10 points more than everybody else you play rest of the season. You get a bonus position. It's, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's basically like saying, I get one extra roster spot. I get, <laughs> what right. would you, what would you trade in for your league a for a roster spot? spot? I get another flex. Like a starting lineup spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I have not traded Travis Kelsey. <laughs> of course not. I've hung on to him. Let me just say I really hope, and I mean this as a dear friend, I really hope that you lose out and do not get in the playoffs. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, I, 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 I trust that you thought is, that already before this week. It is a compliment, um, but please don't make yeah. it Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. All right, quarterback stinkers. Russ. Uh oh. Russ was. Uh oh. What do you What do you do now? Do you is it disrespectful? You play Russ? People no. will think that we're we're biased no. because we're Cardinal fans that we won't give Russ his due. But um, what? Two more interceptions in this game. Uh, you you play Russell Wilson, especially against the Arizona Cardinals on Thursday. He's going to be perfectly fine. This is more a we need to highlight the Los Angeles Rams defense. We have yes. we have not given them the respect that they deserve. Uh Jalen Ramsey shut down DK Metcalf. They they have a pass rush. They have a they good pass defense. See the Rams aren't thought of as the Steelers, the Ravens, these juggernaut defenses, but the Rams are crushing people. Uh they are crushing fantasy values. So 
that's more of what it is to me, not not more on Russ. And the thing is, is their their identity is kind of the same as those big teams. It's like the running game now and playing defense and putting right. Goff into a play action pass situation when he needs it. But Russ, uh, look, he can't do everything. Their defense isn't holding up. He's made a few more mistakes recently, and that was enough to get some losses. Now, last year, he was a great fantasy quarterback by the end of season ranking, but his consistency ranking was 13th. So it begs the question, you know, is there a worry that you're going to have more of that this year? Probably not. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, you, I, I agree with Mike. I think this is a full credit to the Los Angeles Rams. Um, we couldn't watch a snap of that game where Russ dropped back to pass and wasn't fearing for his life. I mean, that pass rush was dominating mm -hmm. that offensive line. And, you know, if you look back, this is his second um, bad game on the season. That's still really, really good. I, I expect Arizona, Philadelphia, New York Giants, New York Jets. That's his upcoming schedule. Russ is fine. They also need Carson back. Yeah. Chris Carson will help Russell Wilson. I believe they are undefeated with Chris Carson oh. and have not won without Chris Carson. Oh, there you go. Oh, Russell Wilson for MVP <laughs> is hmm? Is he even your own team's MVP? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Take that 12 man. Oh my goodness. All right. Derek Carr, Drew Locke, Carson Wentz, Jared Goff. I, I, I don't, I can't handle Goff being here. Because golf played so spectacularly. Yes. 27 for 37 for over 300. And yet. And the they, team scored four touchdowns. He. Now, what I understand from this is that he believed that the five yard line was actually the pylon. Mm -hmm. And so he kept throwing them and then they'd go in and they'd just take a knee on like the four and then they'd be like Malcolm Brown come in. Mm hmm. Or uh, uh, Daryl Henderson come in. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, Cam Akers, Cam Akers yeah. come in. Everyone gets a rushing touchdown. If you were like me, I played golf instead of Mahomes in a league, and, and a lot of people played golf. Well, it was the, still a good call. The process was perfect. The result was painful because no touchdowns, which yeah. was the first time since I think week one for golf. And then Wentz, we thought. That's we, what, what do you guys make of Carson Wentz here? I, this is a massive turd. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm. I, it honestly yeah, I know. is. I, I, can sm I can smell it. Yeah. I can smell it. what happened. Yeah. But, like, moving forward, what do you do with Carson Wentz? Jalen Rager. Do the opposite of your instinct. <laughs> Just do the a complete 100% opposite of what you think with okay. Carson Wentz. If you think he's going to be good, he's going to lay a turd. If you think he's going to be bad, he's going to surprise you and run for a bunch of yards. Yeah, that is that's tough. That means sit him the next two weeks because I think he's going to be good. He's you know Cleveland the, and Seattle. Yeah, Cleveland and Seattle are very plus matchups in general. What did I say? You'd have to put the blindfold on to play him this week. Yeah, yeah, and you probably needed to keep it on once the game was over because you didn't want to see the fantasy stats. And then Drew Locke was awful. I just saw that he is completing. You want to know what percentage of passes he's completing mm. when he's under pressure? Zero. It's very impressive. It's thirty-one percent. Oof. Oof. So, um, Oof. but he he knows how to dance in stuff no he doesn't uh no he doesn't all right running backs are you worried list james connor 13 for 36 back-to-back -back massive disappointments against terrible defenses so on the field so it, while the, this was disappointing i'm this is not a panic alarm sure it, you you get worried when your fantasy running backs put up back-to-back -back bad games but jacksonville it's a plus matchup upcoming the uh, next week and 88 percent of the snaps for connor it, i'm not freaked out yeah it's one of those things where i i was more scared the prior week in dallas when he wasn't given that many opportunities yeah. i like the fact that he he was still the guy this week um he was very inefficient in a plus matchup so i don't necessarily look at jacksonville and say oh he's gonna have a monster game i don't think you can project monster games for him anymore, but the utilization did say eighty-one percent of the a, carries. This one's yeah, eighty-one percent of the carries with the carries going down. It, it's a little sure. concerning when I see, you know, the last three weeks, fifteen, nine, thirteen games, you know, that were in control with Cincinnati. I, I'm just saying that there's a little bit of yes, like you, you disappearing that can happen with Connor when you're putting up twenty-two rushing yards, thirty-six rushing yards. I don't know. Like the team, maybe they're trusting Big Ben more now. You know, something's well, a little bit different. Their strength is that trio of wide receivers. And so it makes sense that they're saying our offense is better getting it to them than James Conner. And they've become 
you know, they've been ru running the ball less and throwing more. I would say I'm far more concerned with these next two players. Mike Davis yeah, uh, as that superstar backup waiver wire sensation gets to take on Detroit. And then in, uh, in the, the Denver Broncos running backs, Melvin Gordon, Philip, like Philip Lindsay is not, he, he wasn't really playable unless you were just incredibly desperate because of the opportunities. But now Melvin Gordon, and like right now sitting at the running back 38, hot off the heels of a running back 52, hot off of running back 33. I mean, when they're both there, is Melvin Gordon, how do you even start Melvin Gordon? His name is still his name's still in, in lights and shiny, and you you are drawn to it. But how do you play him? I mean, you try not to. You do what you can to. I mean, next week, let's say everything stays status quo for the Chargers. Are you playing Kalen Balazs or Melvin Gordon? Oof, probably. Uh, who do the Chargers play? Because I know that Melvin Gordon's going to play that Miami defense. Yeah, let me let me double check on that. But uh It's probably Bellage. It's just been like there's no production and the offense looks so atrocious and then when they do succeed it's not on the back of Melvin Gordon. Yep. I it's, mean you feel like you have to play him, but I don't know if you do. Melvin yeah. Gordon or Jonathan Taylor. I'd rather be dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very I you know, honestly, if you have to choose between those, I think you can look and say, Well, which which offense has a better opportunity to score a touchdown? Yes. No, that's true. And, Who's going to be on the goal line? Right. So and, and Johnny so Taylor. Probably Jonathan Taylor has a better opportunity yes. than Melvin Gordon. And it's not, that's not, you know, affirmative for either guy. It's just, that's reality right now. Yeah. And, and that's uh, when you get to the bottom of the barrel at running backs, you're looking for a chance to fall over the, the goal line. All right. Uh, other disappointments, honorable mentions here. Duke Johnson, we talked about it. Yeah. That was hugely disappointing. He was, you know, single digits for a guy who has the whole role. And and Gio, <clears throat> the, the backups, Duke Johnson and Gio Bernard were both bad. DJ Dallas did nothing. Alex Collins off the street, got the majority of opportunities in Seattle. Crazy. And then uh, Jarek McKinnon. Really Jer bad. Jer 18 for 33. Got, got, oh, I looked at that number wrong. Yeah. He had 18 carries. 18 carries. What could you ask for? He's got those tired legs, More man. More than 18 carries. And he got 33 yards. That's 1.8 a carry. If you want to know how much opportunity Raheem Mostert will receive. Yes. That's what, uh, that's what I'm saying, man. Mostert is a nice trade for target. And then the Baltimore Ravens backfield, which if you watched the Sunday Live uh, I compared it to Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. We were having a nice house party. And then Mark Ingram is is the police coming with the noise complaint saying we got to shut this thing down. And that is exactly what he did, man. He turned them all. You can't start any of the Ravens running backs anymore. No, you can't. My party has been ruined. Yeah, I mean, five for five for Ingram, seven for 42 for Gus, who looked good. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, five for thirteen. Stink, stink, stunk. I mean, see, they all they all get two targets. It's crazy to me that they keep giving the ball to Mark Ingram. When Gu Gus Edwards is the best. Like, if you want a grinder as the you know the identity of the Baltimore Ravens, how do you not give the ball to Gus Edwards fifteen times a game? Is it because of the dual threat perceived dual threat dual oh, yeah. threat of Mark Ingram? Mark Ingram is a much better. Pass catcher, catcher than Gus Edwards, even though Gus Edwards did have that 31-yard reception, which was sweet. All right, I saw I saw a lot of people saying this was going to be the Mike Thomas week. Michael Thomas was going to dominate for fantasy. Seven targets, two for 27. Brutal. Ooh, man, he brutal. is. Brutal. But if you played against DK Metcalf, uh, you were okay. Two for 28. Whew, brutal. Yeah, uh, Jalen Ramsey was legit. Now, with Michael Thomas, are, are you concerned going forward? Because he doesn't have his Drew Brees. Uh, yeah, no, nope. Okay. Yeah, not I, that worried. I mean, y you're gonna play him, and Jameis will throw the football. Traquan's concussed. The question I will be: the, We don't know yet what a full week of game planning looks like for Sean Payton to for Jameis Winston. I mean, I just I have no idea. What I know is that Jameis Winston, in historically, has found his favorite target, and he locks on. And if that's Michael Thomas. You could be talking about a 15-target game against Atlanta. You're going to play Thomas, and you're just hopeful that that is what transpires. They, they weren't the only two studs to have down weeks. A.J. Brown oh. just one catch. Jason was having a hard time with one it. One really big drop. He, he had a 70-yard touchdown. It was a <laughs> gimme. Just catch the ball. 
Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, both only five catches, no touchdowns, 30 yards for Woods, did, 50 for Cup. Wait a minute. How did he pass for 300 yards <laughs> yeah. and these two guys Josh, combined Josh for 83? Josh Reynolds. Reynolds. We, we did highlight him on the starts of the week. Yeah. Um, talking about 14 targets the, the previous two games, seven in each. Josh Reynolds is a, is a part of this offense. Yep, and Robbie Anderson, four for 21. Will mm. Fuller and Brandon Cooks, those weather. get a pass. The yep. weather was pretty rotten. And, it was. And uh, five for 38, six for 39. But they get New England, right, coming up, so that's not exciting. And then uh, Devontae Parker, tough to trust, two for 31. You know, with Tua, it, Parker's not the same. I mean, we know the difference of uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick back there. You're excited mm -hmm. about Parker, and then Tua's back there. You're scared to play Parker. Mm -hmm. All right. Has the shoe dropped for Travis Fulgham? Nope. I wouldn't say that the shoe was dropped. This was – I mean, it did for a week. This was – Target share was way down. This was James Bradbury, and I know that uh, you were we were optimistic and hopeful because Fulgham came through with a bigger game against Bradbury just a couple weeks ago, but – Overall in the season, uh, the coverage of James Bradbury is not something that you want your top wide receivers to face because he's been excellent. So I'm not super concerned about it. I know that Alshon Jeffrey is back, but I will let Alshon Jeffrey prove to me, the team, the world, that he deserves a target share before I'm going to bail on Travis Fulgham moving the forward. The funny part is if you had to decide between a wide receiver to play next week, think you still probably are playing Fulgham. You're not playing yes. Jeffrey over Fulgham. You could no. say Rager. Yeah, I, I think Rager would be the next guy up, but it would be it would be Fulgham. You're the the obviously it was a disappointing week and to speak to what Andy was saying, the the target percentage was down significantly for him and that coincides with getting Rager and Alshon back. So you worry that okay, now that the weapons are there and I mean, Miles be, Sanders Alshon had one target. Well, sure. I mean, Greg Ward was more involved in this particular game. But if you look at the last several weeks, you've got Fulgham up at 36, 25, 26, 25% of the target shares, 14% as soon as they got healthy. And so that's a little bit concerning. Yeah, I agree. Stinkers of the Week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Going to have a great week of shows this week. Get you ready for trade deadlines. Get you ready for your fantasy football playoffs. And we want to thank Pristine Auction. Now, this week's special auction is dedicated to pop culture items, which is cool. You don't just have sports memorabilia. you got pop culture stuff there. Uh, I'm always browsing for some Back to the Future gear. Mm -hmm. Bidding starts at $20, no reserves, and it lasts through Thursday. Uh, there's there's back to the future gear in this auction. Is there? <laughs> yes, sir. Have you purchased it for me, Brooks? <laughs> I've perused it. <laughs> you know your responsibilities around here. Here's another example. There's a Rain Wilson, so that's Dwight Schrute from the office. Uh, eight by ten photo on there. There's Star Wars items on there. You can check them out. Pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers. You'll get a ten dollar credit towards that pop culture purchase. So yeah, pristineauction.com. The, the sports stuff is still there too. Just. Uh, People need well, to that's true, Mike. Thank you for bringing that forward. And make sure you check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We've got all the tools up there, the start-sit tool. We've got uh, the snapshot tool, premium projections, a whole bunch of uh, resources. Strength of schedule yeah. starting to become important. Yes, it is. No doubt. So we'll be with you tomorrow, Waiver Show. Enjoy the game tonight. All I need is 45 points from Robinson and Jefferson. Oh, we I, I just need Madison to outscore Adam Thielen. Okay, easy, easy. Easy peasy. All right. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.